All right, so let's get to the meshing of this uh, this hybrido sim here. Um, we go over some some stuff with this. Um, again, we're not um, we are not uh, going to render this out or anything like that. Though there we do have the rendering function uh, functioning here in the, within RealFlow actually Maxwell uh, now, and I can actually show you some of that. But um, for the most part, we're not going to do that. Um, in fact, uh, if we were going to be rendering this, we'd probably be using the the RealFlow render kit. So uh, instead of meshing this out, because meshes. Um, it's uh, it's been kind of a burden in the uh, world of uh, fluids and liquids specifically um, because you're handling two data sets at that point. You have your particles, um, then you have your uh, mesh. And what the render kit does, it lets you um, mesh without uh, making meshes. Uh, does it uh, during render time, uh, basically level set meshes. Um, it's really, really handy. It kind of saves our butts a couple times here at Blur. So um, it's something to look into. Uh, for sure, but we're just going to be re uh, dealing with meshing here in uh, RealFlow. And in fact, this stuff over in the render kit uh, translates exactly over because all the settings are the same. So, so go ahead and um, start meshing. So up here we have our little meshing tab. Uh, we have particle mesh, uh, the old legacy meshing system, uh, and then we have a hybrid mesh. So let's go ahead and select this. And let's go to a frame here where it's on. And what this does is it automatically connects for you, which is pretty sweet. And I'm going to just hide the flip here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to click this and make a new um, layer. And let's call this mesh. Let's spell it right. Mesh. Bam. Okay. Um, up here. And also, too, there's a weird, I don't know if it's a bug or what, but um, sometimes you make something and click on it, and this scroll button here will be down here, and they'll be like, oh, where's my settings at? Just scroll up, and they're going to be there. It's, that's happened a few times uh, to, when I was teaching this class. So um, without anything here, any sort of changes at all, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, enmesh this one frame and see um, how it looks. You right click on that and just press build. And sometimes the meshing takes a while, even with low low settings. That's why it's good to do use the render kit that way you can just render it and see it, and it's actually pretty quick. So I'm gonna take a little bit here. I'm gonna probably just pause this for a second. Alright. So we get here all oh, my friends can unselect this guy. Alright, so we got our uh, Ever mesh here. It does a pretty good job. Um, go back in and see if we can select this. So it's pretty high, high quality. Um, just by itself, this works pretty well. I mean, just for this flat surface and stuff like that. But we can add our displacement and all that good stuff to it as well. Um, all right. So let's start adjusting stuff here. Let's go back into our mesh. Um, we'll go over some of these settings really quickly. Build basically means it's going to build the mesh. Uh, this weight normalization, I kind of forget what this means. Um, all right, so this steps it makes um, better results uh, when particles are uh, clustered up. Like if you were seeing this, the, the, the splash and stuff like that. Um, this will probably yeah this um, this will make this uh, meshing go a lot. It's a lot slower when this is on. Um, I usually just turn it off um, for most of the time. I think I've used it one or two times um, during some testing or something. But for the most part, and it depends on your shot too, to how how high quality you need the mesh. You know, uh, a lot of times, um, if we're doing something really large scale like this, um, a lot of the errors in this mesh are going to be covered up with <laughs> with the splash, anyways. You know, but it's good to know like this kind of helps you out with all that. So. Um, auto polygon size. So what, what this does is it basically real flow does its best ability to um, figure out what uh, size these polygons need to be. The bigger, um, we can put this to the yes and uh, go ahead and build it and see what happens. Pause. So yeah, it is pretty much the same size. Um, uh, we'll turn this to no. You can put this like say 0.5 for instance, and um, let's go ahead and build this really quick. This should be pretty quick actually. No. 
bigger the number this is, of course, the bigger size of polygon and less quality we're going to have. Should build pretty quick. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so that actually built uh, semi quick. Okay, so we can kind of see here what uh what this point five is. Um so we'll leave this at like say point point three or something. Um auto poly or auto particle radius. So what this is doing is essentially um trying to real flush out like, hey well it's uh trying to find out what, what radius it wants to use and if I recall I think it uses the cell size here in point three in this uh, in here to, to do that with. Um, I usually leave this on auto to begin with when I'm starting first meshing, just so it kind of gives you a general idea. Um, but th this is kind of a dance between the polygon size and particle radius. Uh, ideally, you know, um, if you think about it, you want to have a really small radius and um, uh, higher polygon size of course you know so that way you get uh, a really smooth mesh but that's really also then dependent on uh, how many particles you have so the less particles you have the bigger your radius is going to have to be to work so we'll leave this as default here open boundaries um, this is really cool actually um, let me go ahead and uh, go back a frame oh and you know, we'll just come back up here um, we want to unhide our flip here real quick. This, okay. You see this, don't worry about this error. This just basically says it can't find the bin file here. But it's uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and hide this guy. Because we want to mess with this open boundaries here. So, um, you see this little guy here? This is um, what how this open boundaries works. So basically open boundaries uh, will basically just project the mesh down and that way we only see like the top part of this fluid instead of all this extra nonsense we don't need under here and this is really important for when we're um, uh, doing like a, a large like a scale like ocean or lake or something like that um, because the water needs to be ray traced through and you know you can't really have this volume in here so let's just move this up and it's gonna whatever it's gonna be down below it will cut off so let's put this above it here and it's going to be only in this section two, for instance. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like this. Come over here. This yes, and we'll go ahead and build this guy. And I'll go ahead and pause it. Okay, so it came up with something actually kind of interesting here. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is here. It looks like it's I don't know if it's a bug or what, but um, essentially how this is supposed to work is that it projects it. Uh, from this this box through here right so anything below this this should be deleted uh, through at this point here so uh, you know we we have bugs like this and I'm not sure if it's just this version that they just released or what but um, let's see if we can't have a workaround so this is what this is kind of about um, kind of things messing up like that for us and seeing how we can fix it so um, so go back to this mesh real quick here and there's this little feature down here called clipping so essentially we can clip out uh, mesh as well so let's go ahead and just try that out make a cube and uh, I'll just make it really big here this down. so let's grab the cube up here and let's try like 50. Let's go 50. Okay. And so anything on the inside here. So we'll just go ahead and clip out this mesh. See if it'll work. Mesh here. Clipping objects. The cube. Okay. And so we want to say ins we're going to clip this stuff on the inside here. So that should probably be good, so I'll go ahead and try building this again. Okay, well, it seems that um, this isn't working properly, um, but I think I can get the idea. I'm not sure if it's just a bug in this um, 
this version, I just actually got this new version recently, so, uh, of 2013. Um, the one before this um, seemed like it was working fine, so, um, yeah, sorry about that. Looks like it's uh, kind of not working, but it should just, basically, anything below this should be deleted, so I'm not sure if it's uh, either the sim or what, but um, it doesn't really matter too much right now either. Um, at least still show you the functionality of everything else, so it's not, not a huge deal, but um, if you ever see those tests online where people have just the, the top part of the fluid uh, uh, in there, um, it's, yeah, it, it just has a top part, and it's really nice to have that. Uh, and even the clipping wasn't working properly, so I'm not sure if it's just this, uh, this sim or what, but, um, but yeah, it's uh, quite, quite weird. Um, in any case, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, um, I'll go ahead and probably rebuild this mesh and make it the whole thing here, and I'll show you some displacement stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video again and do that really quickly. So you can go ahead and turn this to new and um, keep this at 0.5. Oh, and uh, if you put this to yes now, I thought this was based off the domain. It's actually based off this number. So if we change this to say 0.6, you can see this updates to 0.6. So uh, we'll go to 0.5 again here and we'll go ahead and build this. And we're okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, since this is all good here. Um, Let's go to a frame here where this guy is coming out of the water. Let's try like 88, I guess, would be a good one. Okay, yeah, this is a pretty good one. Well, let's go back a couple of frames here. Um, let's get like a, a decent frame where we can start kind of looking at this mesh. Um, we won't do the whole sequence, um, but I'll show you the, uh, the method of how we would mesh this. Um, and again, ideally, it would have been nice to have the um, this thing working properly, then we could have just meshed uh, just the one section of it or whatever, but it seems like it's just not working, uh, unfortunately. Alright, so let's go ahead and um, move to here, and again, leave it all default here, and I'll go ahead and build this. Okay, so here we are back. It's built out. And you can see, like, it's just too big. <laughs> uh, it's too much. Um, it doesn't really work out so much. But again, too, we can go ahead and make the particle radius and uh, all that stuff smaller in here and start building that out. Um, so let's go ahead and just do a couple settings here. Let's see what we get. Um, let's go ahead and we'll put this to point, point one again. Um, and this displacement I'll go over in a minute. Actually, yeah, this is something different we're, we're going to be looking at in a second, which doesn't really kind of kind of put it in here, but I'll show you something else with it. It's really cool. We can actually just do a displacement shader on here and then um, uh, make it look, you know, basically have like some choppy waves and stuff. But for this sort of like effect, we're not going to have it here, but I will de definitely go over it uh, at some point there. Um, let's see here. Back over here, filters. Okay, so what we can do here with these filters is, um, in fact, let's make this like 0.2, make it a little bit bigger. Um, the splash thinning filters. So this will basically choke in on the uh, splash part of uh, of this. So the splash being uh, what Rufflow does is it, it, it figures out like, oh hey, if this is moving like this, this is the splash. Um, and the same thing with the course, just like our sampling thing over here in the domain, uh, if you remember from uh, when we were setting it up originally, um, or actually in our emitter, yeah, our surface sampling here. Now, it's sort of the same thing, so it is the outer layer of, um, of our stuff here, you know, so that's how the core and the splash, so essentially if the particles are moving, it's considered the splash. Um, we can say yes, this is on by default. Um, a lot of this stuff is set pretty pretty well uh, to begin with. Um, this threshold um, basically is a normalized value, I believe, if I remember right. Yeah, so higher the higher this number, you know, the less uh, thinning size it's going to work out. So um, at the thinning size, so you know we can increase this more and more. It's almost like a, rela um, a relax in a sense, almost. So, oops, there we go. 
uh, coarse mini filter. You can turn it on or off. Um, I just leave everything by default usually. Um, again, this, the steps here, the, uh, the more it's going to be more smoothed out. Um, so let's just see what we do. We can get without messing with too much of these filters at first. So I'm going to go ahead and build this guy out really quick. Okay, so this is what we got here. Looks not, not too half bad actually. Um, and while I'm at it, um, let's go ahead and look at this rendering stuff. This Maxwell renderer up here, where we can uh, we can do this. This is pretty cool. So if we just go ahead and press fire. I think it's going to render out the particles too, so I might have to turn those off. It's kind of neat. So you just press it, and you can actually do some really cool um, previews with this stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to render all the particles and stuff. Yeah, that side here. It's kind of neat, you know? You can get this kind of cool look to it and stuff, you know? Um, but it's even neater if you go into here and come down to our domain, or I mean our mesh, whoops, and it has a shader type, right? Um, you can, uh, oops, wrong one, the Maxwell render here. Um, the material, we come in here and put, uh, like say, whatever you want, you know, water, ocean, for instance, and come back up here. I'm going to go ahead and hide this flip so it doesn't render out. And it should be a little bit faster this time. Yeah. It doesn't really look like much like ocean water right now. But we can come and close this and uh, come up to here. And this is the settings for all this stuff. And we're not going to go over too much of this, but right now it's dawn, so we can go over to say it's like noon ish. Say like golden hours or something. Uh, we can also do, uh, you know, we can put in uh, HDR files and stuff, which is really cool. Um, image quality and all this stuff. I'm not going to go over too much of this stuff, but max frame time 600 seconds. It's a progressive render, so it'll just keep going and going as much as you want. Um, uh, physical sky, turn that on, apply, okay. Let's try this again real quick. Again, too, these droplets are just way too big, you know, and through here. So we'd really have to make this the, uh, the size smaller here. Well, let's see here if it's going to work. Make over here. Actually, you know what, if I remember right, you can move around while this is in the screen. It'll, yeah. I think. Yeah, still. Let's go like the noon. Well, yeah, updates in kind of real time. Just gonna move around here and see it. It's pretty cool. I mean, then also, uh, we can change this to, say, um, just, uh, let's see, water pure. Yeah, so, I mean, this is clearly not <laughs> what we want, but um, kind of neat, you know, for just being in, in real flow to render this out. I mean, it's really nice looking. But anyways, um, I digress, so we're not really gonna mess with that here. So I'm just gonna put this back from the nude. And, um, Let's put a couple other little settings in here to make this look right. And again, too, um, if I come in here now and turn on our foam, you know, I mean, ideally a lot of this in through here is going to be broken up and hidden by this by this foam pass, you know. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and hide foam again. And to we just probably need a lot more particles for this to work. So we're going to mesh. And I'm gonna go ahead and change um, this to this is 0.15 is fine. And oh, let's just try this as a point. If I'm also, I think I had this uh, open battery state kind of working finally. So um, let me go ahead and grab the domain here. Let's do it there. Oh, I need to unhide it. And. For some reason, I think it was just those frames, but I'll do this just like a little section here, real quick. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and build this and pause it again. Okay, so yeah, the open batteries thing <clears throat> still didn't really pan out. Uh, turn it back off. So 
Yeah, so this point, uh, point 0.15 array is still a little too big. Um, we can dial this in a little bit more. Um, uh, it just really kind of depends on where you're at uh, during this whole thing. Uh, during the shot, if you're out further, that you could probably get away with this. Again, if we turn the splash foam on here, turn it back on. Yeah, so a lot of this would be covered up. Um, again, you probably just have to make it a lot smaller. So let's actually I'm gonna move this along here. And we'll make another frame, and I'll kind of show you how I was talking about the surface offset stuff. Uh, we won't be hitting that back up, but at least see how this foam works here. So I'm going to go ahead and build this guy out here, uh, right here at this frame. And let it kind of do its its thing here. Um, but then this way you can kind of see how this is floating on the surface or how it's not floating on the surface. So go ahead and do that. Okay, it actually built up pretty quick. Um, so you kind of see how this foam is um, on the surface now. Um, and it does a pretty good job. I mean, you don't really have to offset it too much at all. Um, it's kind of kind of cool looking here. Um, but I'll go ahead and probably build this out again. A little bit smaller, a little bit more um, choppy through here. Um, and again, too, I mean, you can kind of see a lot of this, the, the mesh here. Um, settings by default are pretty pretty good now. I mean, you know, um, this you again you'd want a higher res base sim, but uh, you know for just getting something looked down of movement really quickly to show your supervisor it works really really well. So let me go ahead and uh, hide this and uh, let's go back up to this. But yes, and let's put point zero eight. Let's see how this how this works. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'll build this out real quick here. It's going to take a bit longer, so we'll go ahead and pause this again. Okay, so I made this um, mesh again. Like I said, a lot smaller uh, polygon size, and uh, with this radius down here, since it matches it, get this to no. Um, so you start to get that divity, holy look to it here. And select the mesh here so we can actually see it. In these little pockets in here, it's not what we kind of want. This is kind of nice. They're here, but uh, it's, it's not. This whole thing is not what we want. So we kind of like the polygon size, um, but the radius is just too small now. So let's put this to point one and see if we can kind of get somewhere in between this here. Um, Okay, so we have still a few more of these divots in here. I wouldn't put this to point one two. Um, it seemed like point one five was kind of a magic number. Um, also, what we can kind of do is this core smoothing filter. Let's turn this off real quick and show you kind of what that does as well. Go ahead and build this guy out, and you'll kind of. So like I said, it's kind of like relax. So a lot of this stuff will kind of be uh, not so like these little angles through here probably won't be there and all that. So okay, so now we can see this uh, how it's all lumpy and stuff like that now. Um, and before it's kind of like smoother and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and um, I'll turn this back on. And uh, you can also do the global. Um, thing here too as well uh, instead of the core in, in the splash so we can do the whole thing if we want make it a lot smoother through here um, I'll, I'll, I'll turn this on as well too and turn this like to five um, for the relaxation and stuff like that um, get a little bit more and I'll turn this down to 64 since we're doing this down here so um, I probably won't go too much more into this this meshing stuff right here uh, but I'm gonna after this I'm gonna show you guys uh, some cool displacement stuff that you can use uh, in here to get uh, kind of a larger scale looking fluid. Um, it's something we wouldn't want to use with this because we have something coming out of the water and um, we can certainly use it, but um, it kind of starts messing up and you know, I'll show you that in a little bit. But I'll go ahead and build this again and uh, get something a little bit nicer. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, the displacement part of this. 
Okay, and this is probably about as good as we'll do with the resolution we have for our uh, our sim. You know, it's not a bad, not a bad match really. But ideally, our our sim would probably be a lot higher res uh, and than this. But you know, this kind of gets the. Uh, this is really good to, like I said, to show a supervisor or something like that. Just kind of like get a buy off, and you know, it's all about speed anyways when you're dealing with this sort of stuff. Is just trying to get as fast as you can. Um, so I'm gonna go back here to the beginning here. And uh, frame two ish, and go to this mesh here. And I'm going to turn off this and keep this stuff on here by default. Um, I'm going to turn this up to say 0.5 again. Uh, yeah, that's good. And we're just going to build this really quickly, show you something. So we're getting to this kind of displacement stuff with real flow. Um, show you some interesting stuff how this kind of works. Um, you can do it in other applications like Houdini as well as a post, a post sort of thing. Um, and especially if you have the render kit, this is it's it's a lot better to do it again too in the render kit. Um, but you can I'll show you in here how this works. Is that way you don't have to export a bunch of data out. So we have this here. Uh, if you come to your mesh, you come down to shader type. It's on displacement. Interesting. This is like cool like, thing, right? Like old thing here, but it doesn't look like much yet. So we'll go back over to the mesh, and it's saying shader type is where is this coming from? Well, the domain. So go to the domain, and if you go under the ocean statistical spectrum, click on this. Says never. Just go to always. And you get these like cool little like uh, ripples and stuff like that. And this is pretty cool. Now what we can do is change the look of this uh, in here now. Um, time factor is kind of time scale. Uh, I usually leave this at one. You don't have to really mess this much. Uh, the quality, of course, is the quality of the um, uh, the maps it's gonna, it's making for this. So if we go to 24. It's kind of noticeable in here. You get pretty. Yeah, so it's not so noticeable on this like little stuff here. So we'll change this to by 12 for now. Vertical scale. So this is the vertical scale of the, of the waves. Still one, it gets all crazy, right? So it's 0.5 for instance. Uh, auto dimension. This basically, I always leave this on the yes. Yeah, real flow does a really good job of keeping what the dimensions of uh, the noise or the displacement is supposed to be. Auto wind speed. Um, this is uh, the speed of the wind in which uh, the, for the choppiness stuff to work. And I'll get that in a second. And the wind direction, you can uh, change which way the, the wind will be blowing. Uh, the wind alignment here, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, so it only with small values waves. Okay, yeah, it only uses um, right. In, so yeah, you're gonna get more and more waves once this wind alignment is increased. Um, let's leave, I leave most everything I'm testing at default pretty much. Uh, minimal wavelength at this point five, you get more of a, a spread it out looking thing. One, you get more. Let's put this back to point two, for instance. The weight against wind, so this is basically the weight that the wind is pushing against the water. Um, I think, yeah, if you change this, it'll, it can't, it's not too noticeable until we start playing. So let's get this to point two, for instance, for now. Um, and so this is where this stuff that gets kind of fun right here, this choppiness and all this. So let's go to this choppiness, put one. We starting to get this like cool little effect in here, right? But let's, we want these we want these waves to be really big, right? Um, so let's go ahead and change some of these settings here. Um, you can change this depth or a dimension. Um, you probably should. So the fifty. So we see what the bigger this gets. One fifty. It's getting way more high fre frequency in here, so. The one. That's too small. Ten. Fifty. Oh, what is going on? 
on here. Whoops. Check our domain. So if we don't have this wind speed on, uh, the choppiness won't work. So you can see cool, we got really cool like uh, um, like waves now. So we make this dimension one. You can kind of think of this dimension as like zooming in and out of a, of a, a noise. 10, so let's say 35 or something. Now, if we want to say white caps on this guy, let's turn this to yes. Get you some white caps. Um, and we could kind of like adjust this stuff too. Now, if we come up to our our uh, um, our quality, we can kind of tell a difference. It's in there. It's gonna take a second. A little bit better Come through here. Let's go to our um, vertical scale, up to 0.7 or something. You can see though, we turn that to t uh, 2K. It's super, it gets super slow. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that back to 512 because it's not a huge, huge difference in the quality. Get this. Let's go to the auto dimension. Uh, there's a heat, yeah, so it's actually pretty. Put that to, whoops, this to uh, 50. So it's bigger the number, the more we zoom out. Um, 30. And then also, what we can do with this wind speed here, 10, starts to change the look of this quite a bit. The one, you know, you're getting less and less. We're getting more detail in a way. Let's back to five, ten again. You know, so you're kind of seeing that how that's working. Um, so let's go back. Let's say, let's see what fifteen looks like. It's not much difference at all. Ten. You can see the more you put in here, seven, you get a little bit more of a white cap. Let's try ten twenty four. See how this is gonna look. Okay, not much difference at all. So, you can also repeat this. Repeating that, you know. Um, it's pretty handy, you know. Um, now, if we, we can also, again, just keep kind of messing with all these uh, settings, you know, if we take this down to 0.5, get our chop down, put this back to 1. Yeah, so you kind of kind of get the idea here of how this is working. Um, I'm going to pause this and see if I can't do a, um, uh, like a quick, uh, let's say 20, 30 frames of this kind of moving for you guys. It's gonna work out. Um, oh, also, so where's where's this stuff going uh, as well? So, it's uh, hybrid meshes here. Our mesh, our meshes, uh, were being made as bin files and being put into there as well. Um, also, our image sequences, uh, our maps, I believe, where it is being made. At the displacement texture right here, and that's being made. Yeah, in here when we make this. So when we start exporting this out, it'll be made there. And that's turned on. Um, the one thing too, I guess, you don't want to use uh, or do is use the uh, use the cache because basically it's going to take up a lot of uh, memory and time. If you put it on always, it's kind of on the fly, which is cool. Um, you can kind of see how that works. This is just the displacement, you know, through here. But if we were to put displacement yes on this, um, what will happen is here is we have to then bake that into the mesh 
um, and your mesh files get huge. So it's best to um, just take your maps and then displace it in your 3D render at that time. And, and you can you can kind of mess with all that stuff. Um, what else here? Yeah, so for that, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and uh, show you guys. Hopefully it'll be kind of moving a little bit for you and kind of get an idea of how that works. Actually, one thing I forgot to show you guys uh, for this displacement stuff to work in an Im image sequence, um, sort of, or in a sequence um, sort of setting, you have to actually uh, come up here to your domain and make sure this is on always. And what this will do is it will help write out your uh, displacement maps here. Um, let me go ahead and open that up for you here. Show you where that where that lives. Because you have to then re you have to re-simulate it, which kind of sucks. But um, show you where is that at? It's right here. So I'm gonna display some texture. Let me open folder. You can see here that it is being um, over time it's moving and you have three different channels in here uh, you know your uh, RGMB so it's pretty cool you can actually extract different data through here as well so I'm gonna go ahead and um, resend this <coughs> the splash or this uh, the sim I'm doing a lower res though so that way it just goes a lot faster so you guys get get the idea of how this works so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this again and just send this here and then we'll come back and I'll show you how the image sequence kind of works with, um, with this is the displacement. And again, it's better to do the image sequence than to bake it into the mesh because your mesh files get massive at that point. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that now and I will return. All right, so I went ahead and meshed this out here. Um, it's not that great of a mesh, uh, but... Let's see here, let's have a little look at what this looks like. Um, let me go ahead and just make this like 50 frames. And you know, it's kind of coming out of the water. So the reason why I went and didn't re remesh this like before I was saying is that I w we wanted to um, make sure we calculated the displacement maps uh, in this and we can use in our uh, ex external applications, uh, 3D applications. Um, and you have to do that again in order to have uh, those maps um, output. So let's play this again. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing really fancy in here. But I will. We're going to go into Max really quickly, and I'll show you how that kind of works in Max. And it's pretty much universal through uh, all the other 3D applications. We're basically just applying this displacement map uh, onto the mesh for it. Uh, at, uh, you can either do it render time or in the actual geometry. And again, too, really quickly, if we go into Export Central here, you come over to the domains. And this displacement texture, if you click on this, and then come over to Open Folder, it should open up here in a second. It's a little bit weird. It might be already open. Let's see here. Yeah, there it goes. Um, so we have our displacement texture here. And you can see how it's moving through. And it has three different channels, R, G, and B, uh, which I will show you some cool stuff in, inside of uh, Max and what we can kind of do. So we can close this. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this guy here. And make this guy smaller. Okay. Um, again, to... Um, you know, this is just a real quick setup uh, I did here. Uh, I just brought in the mesh uh, via the real flow bin loader here and just put a displacement um, modifier on it so we can see it in the viewport. We could do this in the shader as well, but this is just a lot easier for us so we don't have to render it out and see all this stuff. Um, so here's the mesh for the uh, for this guy here. I'm gonna put a relax on there too, kind of like swim it down. So right now, we bring the mesh in. Uh, just from real flow, this is what it looks like. So it's coming up and it does this thing. Um, and now, if we want to add this little detail in on the top of this, we can now add this displacement modifier and go into uh, go into here and start messing with this if we want. So we just add this map into here. Actually, I'll do I'll do this again so you guys can see it, just in case you are using Max. Um, See, I'll just, the reason I do this actually through here is that way so I can just grab and uh, instance it through. Let's hit OK. It's already on here. I've got this IFL. Um, and what 
what Max does is it automatically makes an IFO, which is an image sequence um, file uh, that references all the files inside there. So let's get okay. Open this guy. And it's in there now. So um, we can come into here now and go to this output, enable the color map, um, and mess with this color map. I'm just going to kind of come over here actually where it's already instanced over. This is where this is actually instanced in here. So and now if we go down this color map, we, could, we enable the color map. And right now, all I have is a, I'm only using the blue channel. So if we turn this on in real time and kind of mess with what this is doing, you know, um, turn this off, turn the red on and bring the red up if we want, you know, so we get a little different look if we want, you know. Um, and you can mess with the strength of this and all this. So you probably want something really subtle. I noticed the blue channel was a nice a nice channel to use. Or you could use all three, you know, whatever suits you. Um, I think real flow uses all three at the time when you do use it in real flow, but um, since you won't be using um, that mesh in there, uh, uh, the the shader uh, displacement shader stuff in real flow to here, a lot of times what happens is you end up just using it in your own 3D application like Houdini or, or Max. So this is why we're kind of doing it this way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this over a little bit here, out of the way. Um, and again, too, so if I come over here, turn the green on, you get a lot more detail on the crazy stuff now. This is a little much. Um, let's bring, let's turn all these on. Let's get here. And then it's just the selective one or something. Two, maybe three. Okay. So now we have this guy, we have a little relax on there, so it kind of takes some of the detail away. Um, we can put this to like one maybe, yeah, that's fine. So we still get some of the detail in there. Again, too, this is a really, really low res sim. This um, actually redid the simulation just to make it really low res so we could just uh, get everything done really quickly. And again, too, it's fine to do these low res sims just to get the motion down, you know, because it doesn't really matter that much. So you can see here that the this these displacement waves are, are moving through through there so it's pretty pretty neat works out pretty well um again too so um that pretty much covers the meshing part of all this uh and that's about it um and there's nothing else really i can go over uh with, do the time constraints and all that but um i think this gives you guys a really good start on how quickly and easy it is to set up a, a simple um large-scale sim you know um inside real flow uh, and, and really quickly um i think the only other things i would like to go over uh, uh, real quickly though is um uh, just a couple uh ending thoughts as far as um how to work um inside real flow and other applications too uh, in general but inside real flow they have really uh, a lot of cool stuff in here um that's new these demo scenes are really really awesome um you can they have something for everything pretty much in here now so if you go to hybrido they have a basic scene if you don't know how to set up something um and like this mothership is really cool actually i'm going to save this and um show you guys just really quickly what this is where it is it there it is let this load up and th these files are really good to set up I mean you can start from these uh, essentially so you start from this and then uh, you can replace your geo or whatever it's just a really good starting point so you have to make everything from scratch um, I won't send this guy out but you know what I will do is I want to delete the mesh here and the foam so you don't need that. Uh, let's see here. So you can come down over here into uh, in here, and it tells you how much what's going on. You know, um, this is just a spaceship that um, the applied texture map for the grid friction parameter, um, which is really cool. You can come to here, and where are my mothership here? Here we are. Grid friction right here. So you can add a texture into here. Um, it looks like it's not found. I don't think they have it in there, so I'd probably have to go find it somewhere. But you can essentially um, put a texture uh, in here to control the friction on the ship. So if you can have like a, a black and white map or a channel, whatever channels you you want to do, in red, RGB, whatever, and it will um, 
the white will be uh, friction and the black will be frictionless. And you can have like a grayscale value and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, won't, I won't send this right now, but it's pretty pretty neat, uh, cool thing. But again, too, you can go come up here, demo scenes. I have something for everything pretty much. Um, this is really good stuff if you guys forget like how to do something. They have a lot of stuff in here for the like you know, uh, stuff surfacing out. Uh, like the waterfall is really nice, uh, rolling waves, all this stuff. So it's a really good uh, starting point for you guys to uh, to check out and uh, just start playing with it and see what you come up with. Um, and you know, uh, I guess you guys will probably be posting some stuff in the forums, and uh, I'll be you know helping you guys along uh, the way. Um, you know, a lot of this software too. Keep in mind is always being evolved and created and. Um, you know, you know, there's gonna be bugs and stuff like we saw uh, in the in the video today with the uh, with the open boundary stuff, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully, maybe it's just my machine, but I was trying to get that to work, and it wasn't uh, wasn't quite being cooperative. But um, hope you guys really enjoyed the the video. Um, I would love to hear your feedback as well. Uh, and anything else, you know, um, I hope I can provide you over the next. Uh, um, period or I, mean, I think it's a couple weeks or however long this is going to be up um, with other files and examples that we use here at Blur as well um, you know so if anything you know please feel free any questions there's no dumb questions and you know keep playing with it and again thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed it